What is up everyone and welcome back to another video on the Winning Mentality YouTube channel and today we've got another exclusive interview um, and it's a, a another former Mansfield man which Adrian Keita will be happy about as a Mansfield mm -hmm. fan. Yes. Another ex-stag. A, a man who made his actual professional debut at Mansfield, Mr. Jamie Sandals white How are you Jamie? Yes, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. How are you both? I'm good, I'm good. So, so surviving. We just managed to uh, <laughs> survive the technical issues because Zoom's playing up today. And as you can see, we've got a background in progress at the moment, which is all a bit horrible. So it, it, do excuse me for that. Um, no problem. But, uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, let's get into it, Jamie. So firstly, you're, you're now currently playing at Crawley Town. Um, for, the, yep. for, the, for those who don't know, uh, but it all started off for you at Queens Park Rangers. Um, so explain the story of how how you came through there. Yeah, so I, I signed there at um, uh, fifteen, so I was under sixteen. So I was quite a late one, really. Um, before that, I was just playing for Sutton United, so they're who in the National League now. Um, I spent I spent quite a bit of time going around different clubs, trying in different clubs, um, mainly down this way. So like Chelsea, QPR, Reading, and teams like that. Um, and eventually QPR offered me. So I signed, signed there at 15 um, and then managed to get um, the scholarship, my scholarship. So I signed that at the end of under 16s. Um, had my first year as a scholar, which um, that, was, that was tough, I think, for me because it was... The first time I went straight from school into scholar, and I think I struggled really to find my feet a little bit. Um, I didn't really play many games for the under 18s, um, and I was sort of finding it quite tough. Second year, um, kind of got some confidence out of out of uh, nowhere. Really managed to do really well. Was the captain of the under 18s for my second year, and signed my pro when I was 17. So the, the first half of my second year scholar was. Um, was really good and positive and I managed to kind of um, get my head down and realise what it's all about um, and then from there went on signed my pro um, and I can't remember where I went to Colchester as, a, as my first loan I think I might have been 18 but that was more of like an experience one um, mm. I didn't play it was more just the experience of being involved in a first team and um, you know being in the squads every week for, for first team games they were league one at the time um, so it's a good experience for me that, um, and then I think the following season I went to Mansfield on loan, where I made my league debut um, at Portsmouth, Portsmouth what, away, which what is a like, place to do it. You know, I know, yeah, incredible. So I'd been playing sort of uh, under twenty ones football. I played obviously international football as well, which was which was um, a different experience. But I'd not not actually played in the league, so to make it. My debut at, at Fratton Park was uh, was really good, actually. I remember being so nervous before the game because I think there must I think maybe like 20,000. I don't even know how many were there that day, but it was incredible. And, uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. And from there, played, had, I think, about three months and, and really enjoyed my time, actually, at Mansfield. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the people. Really enjoyed the club. Um, and then went back to QPR. And then from there, just... Saw, saw, my, my time out. Yeah. <laughs> saw my time out a little bit um, got to 21 and um, and then I moved on from there so I had a really good time at, at QPR I spent about I think it was six years I spent there so um, yeah, it was, yeah it looked back fondly they, they were a Premier League club intermittently at the time um, mm. so what, how much contact did you have personally with the with the first team at that time because obviously they had people like Joey Byrne and Gibral Cissé yeah uh, Alejandro Forlin, who, how, how did you, how much contact did you have personally with, with those kind of guys? Um, well, when, when I came through at QPR and obviously the, the under 21s, they, we were based at the, the same training ground at Harlington. So we were there, we were with them every day, um, you know, in the gym, around the place. But there was probably only, I would say, one season when they went when they won the playoff final was the only season that I was regularly training with them um, day in, day out. So you, you see them around, but you don't, for, for large periods of time, especially I think if you're younger, you don't really experience the training as much. Um, or if you're, you know, maybe the manager really likes you and you're training every day. Um, but you, you, you get to realise how, how different it is training with the first team, especially the likes of those players. Um, you know, because at, 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 at one point they had 
Julio Cesar in goal. Um, you know, like world class players, um, and you don't realise the difference in in the tempo, in the quality. Like it's it's incredible. So you spend that season that I that I trained with them. I think that no, that was the season after I came to Mansfield. Um, it was yeah, it was um, it's just so different so so good to train them you feel you're you're improving a lot more so when you go back with the under 21s you feel sharper you feel fitter you feel you know stronger because you've been there regularly training every day Adrian, do you have any questions on the old mansfield side of things uh, well well we've we've spoken briefly about mansfield and obviously you going to mansfield on loan when you were mm. still at qpr uh, how was it um how was it like for you to make your football league debut obviously at fratter park and for mansfield yeah, it was a yeah, it was a very very special very special moment. I think everyone, every player will will remember their 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 first team debut. Every player, for good or for bad. But luckily, mine was mine was pretty good, and we got a good result. Um, I remember within about ten minutes of the game. I don't know if you remember. Did you watch the game? Were you there? I watched the game, uh, but I wasn't there. I wasn't you weren't there, there so. Uh, the winger Jed Wallace, I don't, he's at Millwall now. Me yeah. and him used to play when we were younger. We played for the same Sunday team when we were a lot younger, and uh, he was on he was on fire at that time. Like he was he was like their main man, yeah. and uh, he would knocked it past me. First ten minutes, I took him out, gave a free kick away on the edge of the box. Then the free kick got taken in. Jed took the free kick, and I went to head it, but it hit my hand blatantly within the first ten minutes of my league debut. And I thought, no way. Is this going to be the start of my football league debut? I've just given away a penalty in ten minutes. Luckily, he didn't see it, and I went on to to actually have quite a good game, and um, we got a good result out of it. So now it was it was incredible, an incredible experience playing at Fratton Park from the first game. Yeah, hundred percent. And from uh, you got released from QPR not long afterwards, and then you moved to the Scottish League for Hamilton. Yeah. If I'm yeah. yeah. How was that experience? Obviously, moving from England to Scotland. Yeah, that was. Um, I'd probably say that was my toughest experience at a club, I would say, because it's a different, Hamilton especially, I would say, is, is a very different um, different kind of mentality uh, than it was in England. Um, and I, quite, I struggled to adjust to that, mm. um, especially, I was 21, I'd moved away from England for the first time, um, and it was, it, was, uh, it was a shock to me, I think, a little bit. Um, but to be honest, I think that looking back now, it's it's um, it's done me some good, really. Um, it's, it's probably toughened me up a little bit as well. So I feel like it's benefited me. Yeah. Um, so after that, that move to Scotland, like, what was it? Did you, when well, actually, when you made the decision to go to Scotland, was it something mm. that that you considered a lot? Because you know they are a top tier club, albeit you know in Scotland. You know we're not going to mm. disrespect Scottish football on here. <laughs> we're not out there to do it. Um, but did you uh, think about was there family family any family going with you and did they what did they have input in into your move? Um, I think the the reason why I went up there I, I left QPR thinking that I'd get a club quite easily um, and I'd probably say a lot of young players do when they leave a big club and they've come through the youth team they think that they're going to stroll in like they probably think oh, I'll go to a League One team or go to a League Two team but. When I left QPR, there was very little interest. It was really quiet for a long period of time. Um, and then Hamilton came up and I thought, right, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go for it, to be honest. It's something new. Um, I've not really got many options on the table at the minute. Um, I'm going to go for it and just, just see where it, where it takes me. Um, I was lucky, though, really. My friend, one, one of my closest friends, he was at Rangers at the time. He was on loan there. So we lived together up there. So we had each other there that was, um, you know, a familiar face. And it was, it was actually, away from football, we actually had a really good time up there. Um, I won't say too many stories, but we had a, <laughs> we had a really good time. And uh, no, it was good to have him up there as well. Yeah. And what would, would you think that for people going in to move to a different country or just so far away from where they are now, that it's important to have someone else with them in that respect? Uh, it certainly helps. It certainly helps. Um, I do feel though, if I was on my own, I probably would have. It would have toughened me up a bit quicker than it did because I'd have had to. You know, I wouldn't have known anyone up there, and I'd have had to fend for myself a little bit. Um, but no, I, I, 
yeah, it's good to have someone there. But I, if I had it again and I, I was going up there on my own, I'd, I'd still do it. Yeah. Um, so to move on to where I sort of first heard of you was at, at Swindon Town. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of semi-local. It's like an hour and a bit away. Um, but I, I, I actually saw you. I, I don't know if you remember the game. Uh, it was a 4-3 against Crew Alexandra back in the day. I don't know. What, I think you were in the squad. Um, and Nikia Jose scored the winner in the last minute, and it was like, a really crazy game. I can't remember that. No. Um, so you made a you made a real impression um, in when you first arrived at, at Swindon Town, and they were a club a lot looking more in the looking more upwards than they are um, are now because they were sort of in, in the middle of League One. So how was yeah. your how was your Swindon Town experience? Uh, Swindon, Swindon up till now is probably the the club that I've loved the most. Um, it was a style of play that just suited me down to the ground. Um, the manager, the coach, the, the players, the place, the, I just I just absolutely loved it. And to this day, I still do love it. And um, I'm so glad to see that, well, fingers crossed that if everything goes with the EFL and the FA that they've got promoted because it's a club that should be a lot higher than it is. So I, I absolutely love my time there. Um, obviously, I've got the my bad injury there but aside from that absolutely loved it and and you you'd obviously had a trial there previously as well and have had one since yeah. um so is it it's clearly a club that that means a lot to you and yeah um but how much did you mentioned the big injury the acl how much did mm. that impact on on you that was uh to the to, to yeah this is probably the, the toughest thing that i've had to had to get through in my life um it's yeah it was um so testing on so many different different levels it was like you know physically it, it's horrible because you can't you can't do things that you thought you you could just take for granted before um but also mentally it's so tough because i was out for 12 months um i was out of contract at the end of that year and swindon had got relegated as well so there were so many things that were going on um so it it, it yeah, like I said, it's the toughest, toughest time I've had um, in my life, I think. What was it like? I'll jump in, Chris, now. Uh, what was it like? Obviously, you, you played for Swindon uh, 15 times. How, what was it like making the step up from, obviously, you played previously for Mansfield in League Two? Mm-hmm. What was the step up like going up into League One? I would say the step between League Two and League One, the difference... I would probably say is is the style of play um, in League One. You've got I feel that the majority of teams play a more uh, passing style of football, whereas League Two it's very uh, very direct and it's a lot more physical. Mm. Um, at the time, I found I, I still say till now that League One is probably weirdly the easiest league I've played in not because the players aren't good and the standard's not good but because it suits me more as a player um, and I feel that I've had to adapt in my career um, to to change my game to be able to deal with League, league 2 and the National League um, which I'm, I'm very confident with doing now but when I was a, I was a lot younger I probably didn't get my head around it quick enough um, that you have to be a man you have to you know win your battles and you have to be a bit horrible sometimes especially at centre back. Uh, talking about the National League, you, after Swindon Town, you moved to Leighton Orient. Uh, how was that spell and how did it come about? So, yeah, I left Swindon. Um, they went down and they were having a bit of a, a reshuffle of the squad um, and the management. Um, I was quite lucky because Ross Embleton, who was the, the assistant manager at Swindon, he went to Leighton Orient as assistant manager. Um, and we were speaking a lot over that summer. Um, and... Once he got uh, you know, he got announced, um, he basically said, "Look, come in. We we kind of want you here." So I was quite lucky in that sense that I didn't have to to wait a while. I sort of knew what was happening and just had to wait to get it all signed. You mentioned you had a you have a close relationship with with Ross Ambleton. Did he, has he had a, a particularly impactful uh, a particular impact on you on you as a player? Um, yeah, I think it, it, Ross Embleton and Luke Williams, who were the, the two at Swindon. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, I'm trying to think of, it, it, it's just a relation. I can't explain the relationship. Yeah. It's just, you know, we're really close. We speak all the time. We still speak all the time now. 
Um, and yeah, they, I think they, they, made, they were the first people to really make football really enjoyable for me. Um, I love their philosophy, um, you know, just the honesty. We, we respect each other. We, we, we all get on so well. And it was the same for a lot of players at Swindon at the time. We, we you know, everyone still sp- speaks to Luke and Ross. And um, yeah, they, they, they gave me a great time in football and, and I'll uh, always be grateful for that. Do you, do you think it's particularly important for managers and players to have that kind of rapport to get the best out of you? I think so, yeah. I think so. I think you need to have, you need to have that honest relationship um, with the players. Um, you know, we've, 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 we've got it at the minute at Crawley with John Yems. Um, and I think you can see with the, with the form since he came in that how, how drastic that change can be um, and how just getting the, the group together can can improve your form so Luke and Ross definitely had that um, with the players and um, like I said it was it was the first time where I said uh, you know this is this is amazing I absolutely love doing this yeah Adrian. Um, moving on from Leighton Orient you moved to St Albans City um, what made you drop down a level to the so town? yeah so uh, Justin Edinburgh had come in at uh, late in Orient I'd had a bit of a situation um, I then got sent off um, and I got quite unlucky in a sense really I got sent off um, if you look at the red card it was never a red card the keepers come charging out missed the ball their strikers clean through on goal and I've come through took the ball but he's fallen over and the ref's given a penalty and sent me off um, and when I went off, I said something I probably shouldn't have done to the ref uh, and got an extended, um, extended suspension. And that was when um, Justin Edinburgh came in, I think, two games after that. And basically, yeah, my suspension kind of killed me a little bit. Um, and then I picked up an injury. I was out for about six weeks. And then um, Justin Edinburgh said that I wouldn't be in the plans, which... No hard feelings at all. That's football that happens and, and you have to move on. So at the time, it was hard to be able to go elsewhere. Um, I probably left it a little bit too late to leave. So the only option really I had was to drop down. Um, and I wanted to do that because it was the first season back from my knee injury. I struggled quite a bit to get my form back um, since before my injury. I was find it, finding it quite hard. And especially, I said, the National League is, is a tough, tough league. I've, I don't think it gets the credit that it deserves in that sense because it is so tough. Um, so I was struggling with that. And I wanted to play games. I wanted to play games, prove to people that my knee was fine. Um, and, and I did that. I think I was there for about a month, maybe slightly longer at St Albans. But I wanted to make sure I played rather than just wait out till the following season because people might think there might be a problem with my knee or whatever it is. So... Yeah, I wanted to do that. But you did enjoy your spell. You, you scored your first career goal for St. Albans. <laughs> how, did, how did it feel to score your first goal? Yeah, it was strange. I, I, I get nowhere near scoring ever, so it was a strange <laughs> feeling. Um, and I probably need to start trying to score a few more goals, to be honest. But no, it was, it was good. It, was, you know, it, it is what it is sometimes in football. And, and I just kind of had to get my head around the fact that, that I dropped, um, well, since the season before, I dropped one, two three leagues I think it was yeah. um, but it, you know I just had to get through it make sure um, I played the games and, and tried to do my best so yeah that, that, that's, uh, that's how that one went yeah and you've, you've been as I said you, you went up to Scotland and then you actually went down to Torquay which is a, 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 you've been here there and everywhere um, so for, know, yeah. for, for, for location wise again was there um, any thoughts about going to Torquay second thoughts because of the distance um, not really. No, I, I'm, I'm quite open to, to where I live. I like, I like, I've, you know, I've experienced a lot of different places and I'm quite grateful for that. I've, I've lived in different parts of the world and, um, Torquay's, it's actually a really lovely place to live. You're down by the sea um, you've got some lovely places to go for, for, you know, to the pub for a few, for a few drinks probably shouldn't say that but a few pints and <laughs> go for a Sunday lunch so it's it is nice it was a lovely place to live and I'm glad I did it um and obviously we we won promotion as well so it was um a good time down there and yeah and yeah you said you do you enjoy 
you know, experiencing these different sort of mini cultures across the UK. Yeah. Like, is it something that you enjoy and want to continue doing in your, in your career? Um, I mean, I'd certainly be open to it. I think now I'm a little bit more settled. I've, I've, um, I've just, well, I bought a place down here. So I'm, I'm, living, I'm living down sort of about 30 minutes from where I grew up. So I'm, I'm happy here for now. Um, but yeah, I think, I think further down the line, I'd certainly like to, to branch out a little bit, maybe when I'm a little bit older. Um, but for now, I've also got a company down here as well, which I'm trying to, to keep running through this time, which is quite tough. But um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm quite settled down here. So yeah, but in the future, I'd certainly like to, to branch out. And we're here now in the present year, you're at Crawley. How was it? Um, how was your first game back in into League Two? How was that? Yeah, it was. It was. Um, it was really good. It was really good. It was against Mansfield, actually. It was. Yes, <laughs> I just remembered that. Yeah, no, it was. It was so good to be back. Um, I feel that ever since I did my knee and I was out injured, and there were times where I literally I thought I wasn't going to play again. You know, I, I had three operations. It just there was points where it just wasn't getting any better. It was. You know, I, I was worried that you know I wouldn't be able to play football again. So. I remember saying to myself, I'm getting back in the league. However I do it, I'm getting back in the league and, and uh, I'm going to work towards that and that's my goal. So when I got back and I played that first game, it was, um, yeah, it was an amazing feeling, to be honest. And um, it's strange, you just, you play that first game, you just want to, you want more and more. So that's, that's where I'm at now. I want to kick on now and, and keep playing and, and do well. And how, how do you think the season has panned out for Crawley? I think it's been a really good season for Crawley. Um, you know, they had the good cup run. Uh, they beat Norwich, beat Stoke. Um, we had a little blip, um, probably in the build-up to Christmas time. Um, got John Yems um, and Lee Bradbury came in. Um, we had a, a change of fortunes. And I played most of my games after January. Um, and we went on a, a really good run. Um, and I think we've got, the, we've, we've got the record for the longest undefeated home run for Crawley Town. So that's good. Um, you know, it's, it, we, it's just disappointing really to, for the season to end the way it did because we were excited to see where it was going to lead us um, because we were really in good form and, and we felt really confident that we could kick on from there. And yeah, so you, you mentioned earlier, like really earlier, the, uh, your time in Northern Ireland's youth set up. Mm. Um, yeah. So obviously some of your family must be Northern Irish. So mm. what, how, what made you... Did you ever have any experience with English youth teams? And what, what made you want to represent Northern Ireland in that respect? Um, yeah, no, I never had, never had any interest from England. Um, I feel that when I was coming through, certainly with England, you probably had to be at the top clubs. Um, I don't think that the top, top clubs, so QPR, would, would have been very hard to get involved. Um, but yeah, Northern Ireland, my mum, my mum is from Belfast, so... That qualifies me. And when there was interest, it was a no-brainer for me, to be honest. I, I wanted to go and play. I wanted to test myself against some of the best best players for, for my age group in, in the world. Um, and it, it, it was, you know, I've experienced some amazing things with Northern Ireland. Um, and yeah, I look back on that, that time very fondly. Do you, and this is going to be a cheeky question, do you think you could, with staying injury-free and keeping going as you are, do you think you could maybe stake a claim for a senior spot? Um, I mean, when I when I was at when I was at Swindon, it was about two weeks before I got injured. I was on standby for the seniors, um, and I feel that at that time as well, I was very confident. I was playing really well, um, and that was that was one of my aims was to get into the senior squad. Um, as of going forwards. I've just got to keep doing well for Crawley and, and keep playing well and see where it, where it leads me. But of course, you know, anyone will want to play um, senior international football. So, of course, that, that is one of my goals. But I think first and foremost, I need to, to do well at Crawley and, and see where it leads me. Mr. Chris, Chris, any other questions? I, I've, any got, other... I've got a couple more for, for you, for you uh, Jamie. Um, so what's been your biggest challenge? And we've asked this to, to the three other um, footballers we've had on. What's been your biggest challenge during this uh, just during this pandemic? Has it been staying fit? 
has it been keeping your company going of course um because you're yeah. interested outside of football what's been what's been going on for jamie sandals white in lockdown um yeah it's been it's been a strange time really strange um i think at the start it was it was certainly a lot of shock that that we were going into a lockdown period um i think the 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 biggest the biggest struggle that I've had is probably with the uncertainty of everything, especially leading up to before the league was, they had the meeting on Friday. Um, you know, when are we going to be back to football? Um, is football coming back? You know, are we going to have to be behind closed doors? Um, you know, when are we, when can we start training? Um, so it was a lot of uncertainty with that. Um, from the football side of things. And I think, you know, everyone wants to get back playing football. Everyone wants football back on. Um, so it's probably a little bit of frustration that we can't actually finish the season now. Um, you know, we, we all wanted to, to finish it and enjoy our summers and get back for a, for a normal season next season. So I think, you know, there's a lot of thinking time as well. Um, away from the football, I've, obviously I've got my, my company, which we've had to kind of um, close down for a period because we, we're, not, we're not able to do any business. So that's been a struggle trying to keep that going. But the business will be fine. The business will be fine. We'll be okay. Um, I think it's just my, my main thoughts now is, you know, when's football going to come back and um, when can I start playing football again? Uh, and, and finally, who the, is the best player you've played with and who's the best coach you've been coached by? Okay. Best player I've played with. First team. For a first team. Any team. So I'll go with, for a first team will probably be the best all-round player and, and person as well is Nathan Thompson, Swindon. Of course. So he was captain when I was there. Um, and, yeah, he's just... He, we played alongside each other at the back. We played three at the back. He played in the middle. And he's just an animal. Um, you know, technically unbelievable um, animal, leader, everything you'd want in a, in a football player. Um, off the pitch, he's an absolute gent as well. Really, really good guy. Um, in general, it would probably be have to be Raheem Sterling at QPR. Um, he was there under 16s, and then he went off to Liverpool. But he was he was on another level. Um, you know, you, you could tell if he if he had you know he didn't even need the luck. As long as he didn't get injured or whatever, he was always going to have a fantastic career. And I think he's gone on to you know you, you, you know his career says it all really doesn't it so he's he's gone on and, and done really really well for himself so he's probably the best one overall that I've played with um, and in terms of coach coaches obviously like I said Luke and Ross um, those two at Swindon and then obviously Ross at Orient as well they're they're um, you know they're like I said before they're just they mean a lot to me and, and um, you know I'm really really close with them um Probably also John Yems as well. He's come into Crawley and, and done really, really well. He's got the team together. And like I said, the, 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 since January, our games and results have been really good. So, yeah, he's, he'll be up there as well. Yeah. Okay. So I think that is a, a very good way to finish us off. Uh, thank you very much, Jamie, for, uh, for joining us on Winning Mentality. Um, no if there's problem. any social medias you'd want to shout out for us, that would be for, for you. That would be uh, absolutely fine. Social media is in, in yeah terms of... for, for you for you. Do you want to any 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 Instagrams or Twitters that you want? Any to plugs? Do? Any plugs? <laughs> um, uh, no, I've, I've not actually got any to shout out. To be honest. Oh, no. there we go. That's absolutely fine yeah. then. Yeah. It makes it makes our jobs a lot easier. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you very much for watching another exclusive interview on uh, on Winning Mentality. It's been uh, really good fun for us, um, and the more the better for us. Really, we we love doing them. And yeah, uh, keep tuning in. We've got, we've had, thank you very much for the support on Danny Roses. Danny Roses uh, did really well. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Danny Roses. Didn't score against us though, did he? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.